Hi, Pastor Dan Smith here with your daily devotion for Tuesday, July 21st. The reading for today is from Galatians chapter 4, verses 28 through chapter 5, 1. I'll read it three times as usual. This is a Lectio Divina. So we're reading the text to try to uh, hear the words. First, how they kind of come into ourselves, into our bodies, minds, spirits. Uh, then we listen for a word or phrase that stands out to us. And then we kind of listen for how the text meets us in our life. Now you, my friends, are children of the promise, like Isaac. But just as at that time the child who was born according to the flesh persecuted the child who was born according to the spirit, so it is now also. But what does the scripture say? Drive out the slave and her child, for the child of the slave will not share the inheritance with the child of the free woman. So then, friends, we are children, not of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. I'll read it one more time. Again, listen for now for a word or phrase that stands out to us. Now you, my friends, are children of the promise, like Isaac. But just as at that time, the child who was born according to the flesh persecuted the child who was born according to the spirit, so it is now also. But what does the scripture say? Drive out the slave and her child. For the child of the slave will not share the inheritance with the child of the free woman. So then, friends, we are children, not of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. I actually have two phrases today. This is unusual, but... Children of the promise stood out to me pretty strongly, and also at the very end, yoke of slavery. Okay, so that's breaking the rules a little bit, but I'll read it the last time now, and we ask how the text meets us kind of in our life. Now you, my friends, are children of the promise, like Isaac. But just as at that time, the child who was born according to the flesh persecuted the child who was born according to the spirit, so it is now also. But what does the scripture say? Drive out the slave and her child. For the child of the slave will not share the inheritance with the child of the free woman. So then, friends, we are children, not of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And it's what kept floating up for me in this text is this debate that we're having in our society about systemic racism and this awful history in our country of slavery and how uh, kind of open and cavalier Paul talks about slavery and this comes up frequently in scripture as something that people experienced. They knew of slaves and people who were enslaved and they used it as a metaphor to talk about a spiritual bondage or being unfree because they knew of people and maybe they themselves had experienced being not free. They could talk about being not free from sin, for example. But they knew very clearly that this was an institution that existed that was evil. Paul says in the book of Galatians as well, there is neither slave nor free, male nor free, female, uh, Jew nor Greek, for all are one in Christ Jesus, implying that it doesn't matter what you are, you're kind of all equal. That's the seeds and the beginnings of maybe talking about a uh, Christian version of abolition. So maybe that's why, for me, uh, this talk of yoke of slavery brings up that th this physical, actual, historical institution, which really was evil. I think we would, most of us would agree that that was bad, and it's good that we, we've abolished slavery, um, and that we're children of promise at the same time, that there is promise and hope in spite of the horrible things that we experience in our history, that we have to reckon with and that we are kind of as white Americans, especially reckoning with, I think, and trying to understand in a new way.
that many of us have blind spots about our history, things that we didn't even know, like the Tulsa massacre of so-called Black Wall Street in 1921. I mean, those were my people from that area of Oklahoma that destroyed an entire neighborhood in a black neighborhood in Tulsa that was flourishing and it was a free market uh, community. They had businesses and homes and they were just destroyed because there were black people that were mistrusted. And that, I mean, that's terrible. That just has to be condemned. There's no way of dressing that up and making it sound like that's okay. It's just evil. So these human institutions like slavery that have existed are they're just bad. They're wrong and they stand under God's judgment. But these words are also used in a spiritual sense and like, that's true as well. <laughs> so uh, I'm just aware of that, um, how the biblical writers will play with these images to try to teach us a greater and deeper spiritual truth while revealing to us something deeply true about how twisted and warped and wrong the world actually is. And we kind of have to be aware of both. That we're, there's a spiritual side to who we are as human beings. We're spiritual beings having physical experiences. And we have a call to make the world a more just and loving place. Like both are true at the same time. And that that's a maybe one of the most important things <laughs> for us is uh, we live it in a time of thinking in absolutes, of black and white thinking. And it's possible for two things to be true at the same time. So I just uh, will leave that with you and keep that in mind. And uh, boy, Galatians um, and St. Paul, this is a very important text that I've wrestled with for much of my ministry for 20 years now. Uh, and I commend this to you. So how does the text interpret you, meet you in your life? Um, chew on a little bit, think about it, talk about it with others and see where the spirit leads. Let's close with prayer. Faithful God, through the waters of baptism, you adopt us into your family and set us free from everything that holds us captive. Strengthen us to stand in your promises with confidence. Your liberation is for all. Amen. And now, dear friends, I wish you blessings and peace until we meet again. Amen.